Hello, this is the GCSE 9 to 1 AQA Geography, Paper 1, Physical, Section C, Physical Landscapes in the UK, video on Coastal Landscapes in the UK. Firstly, how do waves form? Waves form when wind blows over the sea. The friction with the surface of the water against the wind causes ripples to form, and these grow bigger and turn into waves. The distance the wind blows across the water is the fetch, and the longer the fetch, the more powerful the wave is because it has more force. Tsunamis form when earthquakes or volcanic eruptions shake the seabed. So what happens now when waves meet the coast? So in the open sea there's not much horizontal movement of water moving, a, moving across towards the coast, despite the fact that it's got a wavy surface. There's just a general pattern of water moving. However, only when waves approach the shore is a forward movement present because the waves break up and surge up the beach. The water that goes up the beach is called the swash and the water that comes back down is the backwash. Wave types and characteristics, so first we're looking at constructive waves. Constructive waves are low waves that surge up a beach with a powerful swash. Now the swash is stronger than the backwash, meaning that it carries in deposits large amounts of sand and pebbles, so therefore constructing the beach. They usually form by storms which are found hundreds of miles away, which creates a large swell. Now because of the powerful swash, here you can see that a surfer is using the constructive wave because the wave is pushing him forward. Next we're looking at destructive waves. In destructive waves, the backwash is larger than the swash. They've got high steep profiles which you can see here. The breaking wave plunges downwards and pulls back down the sediment. They're formed by local storms close to the coast which gives them this swirling sensation because of the chaotic water. Now you can see that here the wave is breaking and plunging downwards on the coast. They've got high steep profiles. Now we're looking at coastal processes. First it's erosion. Now there's four main types. Hydraulic power is where water from the wave enters little cracks in the cliff. This compresses the air that's already in the cracks which causes pressure to be exerted on the outside of the rock. This weakens the rock and the rock breaks and falls. Abrasion is where water contains rocks, so the sea has rocks inside of them and that bashes up against cliffs and wears away the rocks or abrades the rocks as they're thrown up. Attrition is where rocks and pebbles within the sea hit against each other and break down. And finally corrosion is where there's weak acids within the sea and these dissolve the coast. The next coastal process is weathering, so there's two types and that's chemical or mechanical. So in chemical there's two different types, there's carbonation and hydration. Carbonation is where weak carbonic acids attack the rocks and hydration is where the water swells the structure of the rock. Mechanical is the physical breakdown of the rocks, so an example is freeze thaw and this is where water enters the cracks in the rocks like we said in the previous slide. However this water freezes due to the landscape it's in and seen as it's frozen, the little bubbles of air that are inside of the rocks get pushed up and exert pressure on the rock, which weakens it. Here we have mass movement. So once rocks are weakened by these processes, mass movement can, fall them, can cause them to fall into the sea and beaches, and then the sediment is eroded. So the first example is sliding. Landslides, which you can see here, are where layers of the rock dip towards the sea and then the whole blocks fall. Slumping, which you can see here, is happens in areas where there's alternating layers of rock. So down here there might be hard rock and up here might be soft rock, or permeable and impermeable rock, and these slump down. Rock falls happen due to quick erosion and you can see rock falls happening here. Now the next coastal process is transportation, so we're looking at longshore drift. Here we have a pebble on the beach. The pebble is carried straight in a straight direction off the beach by the backwash of the wave and also because gravity pulls it down the beach. However the waves are moving at an angle so the pebble is pushed back onto the beach by the swash in the direction of the wave and the process repeats over and over again as it moves down the beach 
and this is called the direction of the longshore drift. Here we have deposition. So deposition occurs when waves lose their energy and when waves lose their energy they drop sediment. This can happen with low velocities or ocean current slowing and this could be due to the frictional causes in the seabed or counter currents against the currents that are pushing the waves or vegetation in the seabed causing friction. Now we're looking at coastal landforms and first we're going to be looking at erosional landforms. So this first example is a cliff and wave cut platform. So as waves erode the base of a cliff they form a wave cut notch. This then causes cracks to form in the cliff and as you can see as the water, water moves up to high and low tide this is what causes the shape of the wave cut notch. The bit that juts out down here at the bottom is the wave cut platform and this can be visible as seen in this picture here. The next erosional landform is headlands and bays. So the hard rock which you can see here remains standing whilst the soft rock is, ro is eroded. The hard rock leaves uh, what we call a headland and the soft rock forms a bay. Now the bay forms a beach because as the waves enter the bay they lose their energy and as we know when waves lose their energy they deposit their material and become constructive waves thus constructing the beach. Next erosional landform is caves, arches, stacks and stumps. First we can see here this is a headland and the headland has caves due to erosion. These caves can be eroded to the point where you can go all through, all the way through here and this is known as arches. When the roof of the arch falls it becomes a stack. So this is the stack and this would be the past arch. And stumps are just small stacks. So we've looked at erosional landforms and now we're looking at depositional landforms. So what about beaches? Sandy beaches form in sheltered bays as we saw beaches back there where constructive waves dominate and as I said before the swash is stronger than the backwash so deposition occurs. However pebble or shingle beaches occur on more exposed parts of the coastline. Destructive waves wash away the finer sand and leave the large pebbles. So once we've looked at how beaches are formed, we're now looking at sand dunes moving up the beach. So there are different stages. The embryo dune, which is a newly formed dune here. The force dune is as the embryo dune grows, the marrow grass begins to take hold. The yellow dune, which is still quite sandy. And then the grey dune is quite similar to the yellow dune, except that roots have grown within the grass, which is holding the sand together now. So it's much more compact. And then sometimes you'll find a dune slack, which is where the dune ducks down below the water table level and causes water to form. And finally, the mature dune is here where there's full ecosystems fully functioning with trees and plants and their roots are holding it all together. Another depositional landform is spits. So this part here is the spit and what happens is longshore drift, this is the direction of longshore drift, moves material across a coastline and what happens is this material then reaches a headland but instead of coming round here, the estuary here has a force which stops the deposition from moving all the way across. So what happens is salt marshes form behind the spit as this is the sheltered area behind the deposition. Next is tombolos and bars. So a tombolo is where an old island is connected to a headland by a spit. So as you can see the direction of longshore drift has moved the spit across and the sediment hasn't gone round. And a bar is where there's an old bay which is turned into a lagoon because the sediment moves straight across the bay and forms a bar. Now we're going to be looking at coastal defences and the hard engineering section now First is the seawall. So a seawall is just a concrete barrier um, that's placed against the sea at the foot of cliffs or at the top of a beach. So this is the seawall here and it has a curved face which as the waves move up the curved face reflects them back. So it's very very effective because it's quite a substantial hard engineering method. And another benefit of them is that they often come with a walkway promenade which, is, which boosts tourism. However, a disadvantage is, as you can see here, they look quite obtrusive and this has got moss and things on it and they're very unnatural. 
and they are very expensive and have high maintenance costs because they can be at risk of erosion if you leave them too long. Next we have groins, so these are groins here, they're just timber or sometimes rock structures that are built up and they move out to sea from the coast. Now these trap sediment, so what you'll see, what you'll see if you see a groin is that the sediment is higher on one side and lower on the other because sediment pushes up against the groin and this is to stop the effects of longshore drift. Now they're not too expensive and they do keep the beach in place so as you can see here in this tourist location this is working well. However by interrupting the longshore drift let's say this was a stretch of rural coastline they will starve beaches further along causing increased erosion elsewhere so you're not actually solving other problem. And some people do find these unattractive the next hard engineering method is rock armour. So rock armour are just big boulders of rocks that are dumped at the um, foot of the cliff, usually transported by barge. And what these do is break and absorb waves. Well, you can't see waves here, but they break waves and absorb the energy from the waves so that they don't, the waves don't destruct the coastline. Now, they're quite cheap because you're just dumping a load of rocks, basically, and they're very easy to maintain and they can provide interest to the coast so um, animals might want to come and live there, ecosystems and they can also be used because people can fish on them. However a disadvantage uh, is that they're expensive to transport so often you have to get them from other countries or move them around the country that they're in to transport them to the location and they don't fit in with the local geologies so these rocks aren't the same as the other type of rocks which can disturb the natural balance of the ecosystem and often people find these boulders very obtrusive. The next hard, hard engineering method is gabions. So gabions are just wire cages as you can see here that are filled with rocks. Now on the coasts these usually support a cliff and they also act as a buffer against the sea. Now they support a cliff to stop it from maybe sliding or falling as we saw previously and the advantages are is that they're very very cheap and they're flexible so you can move them around and increase the sizes if you want. They also improve the drainage of the cliff so that water can drain off more easily and doesn't actually get into the cliff and cause more erosion. And these can actually become vegetated and become uh, merged inside of the landscape. However, its disadvantages are is that they look quite unattractive and these cages, as you can see here, they've started to rust a bit. So after about five or ten years, uh, you won't be able to use them. Now we're moving on to soft engineering coastal defences and the first one is beach nourishment. So this is the addition of sand or shingle to make a beach higher or make a beach wider. So the, the, it's, it's quite cheap because you, you don't have to pay for the material really. However, um, obviously you do have to use this barge here and obviously it blends in because it's also sand and the sand is usually sourced locally so maybe just 30 miles off the coast however disadvantages are is that it needs constant maintenance so you keep on having to replenish the supply of shingle to counter the effects of longshore drift but they also have to come in hand with other beach structures so as you can see here groins which are holding the sediment in place and finally we have dune regeneration so sand dunes can be easily damaged by the public or by other animals and what can happen is marram grass, so that is the type of plant that sand dunes are, um, can be replanted by humans to help develop them and grow them up again. Fences like this can also be constructed to project, protect the dunes and these can protect other ecosystems from the public. So not only the dunes, these fences can also protect other wildlife that's living here. And obviously the marram grass is natural to the coast environment. However, some disadvantages are is that it's quite time consuming to plant every, each and every single one of these. And also um, these fences can be destroyed by storms.